Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, we have a problem here in Silicon Valley that the cost of housing is so high that even if salaries are high, it's almost impossible to afford housing. It's not like the days when you could conceivably have sort of like a regular job as you left college, get into a role and be able to afford, say, a one bedroom apartment for yourself on your own. That's almost impossible. It's almost impossible unless you have some high-end tech job and a high-end tech salary, and you're probably not going to get a high-end tech job and a high-end tech salary the moment you step out of college. Some people may, but most people won't. So we have this situation where <clears throat> there's no low-income housing. There's no housing for lots of tech folks. There's no housing for a lot of people who are not in tech. And we see all sorts of people who are using all sorts of different methods to have housing. They're sharing houses. We've got a startup in San Francisco which is selling bunk beds, renting bunk beds for $800 a month probably the only place you can afford to stay. We have six or seven or eight or ten people to a house. It's it's crazy. We have, have people renting RVs. In fact, some of our streets up near, up near Google, up near Tesla, are lined with RVs. And some of those RVs are being rented by those tech workers who can't afford to get into a house. They can't afford to buy a house. They can't even afford to rent a house on their own. In fact, if you look at the average price of homes here, it's in the mul multiple millions, mul 1.2 million or higher. So you need at least two individuals who are making a decent salary at a tech company to be able to work. What if you had one person who had a decent salary at a tech company and one person who was a teacher or a barista or whatever. You can't even set, support that. You need multiple individuals in homes to be able to afford the housing here. It's unbelievably expensive. So I ask you, have we ever had a situation in the past where we have individuals who are unhoused and organizations who have a ton of money in the same area aligning along the lines of wouldn't it be great if these people had homes and I hearken back to once again something that we've done in the past that we seem to have stepped away from and I'm not sure why I don't know if it's regulatory or or there's some other reason it's like I said I, I don't want to infect myself with ideas maybe we used to do this but we don't anymore for some governmental reason for some regulatory reason company towns company towns out in the middle of nowhere they're still around in some places for example there's a company towns in Australia there's probably some company towns in the middle of the, of the country but basically what would happen is that and usually it was because they were out in the middle of nowhere so you were at a mine somewhere out in the middle of nowhere and you had a shift where you would go out live on the company's grounds go to work and then have some time off. I think last time I remember this, it was a mining company and they had three weeks on, one week off or something like that, where they would go out to these mines and they would work in these mines for three weeks straight and they would live at the mines. There would be housing at the mines and they, they, the company fed them, clothed them, gave them everything. They had company stores, they paid them and they, they gave them a place to live, place to stay. So why can't we do that today? I mean, we're so concerned about homelessness. We're concerned about income disparity. But still, we have corporations, organizations with tons of money, like Google, and we have their employees living in RVs by the side of the road. What's wrong here? Is there 
a reason why we can't have a company town within the Bay Area? Is there a reason why we can't have companies extend minif minimum living benefits to their employees? When you hire somebody from out of state to come work at Google, they come work at Google, they give you a paycheck and they say, bye bye. Why not give them a place to live? Why not give them a food allowance? They give them free food when they're on campus. Why not give them a food allowance? Why not give them a clothing allowance? Why not give them a place to live? Or at least a place to start before they can go on and go somewhere else. Now, maybe they're already doing something like this, but I haven't heard anything about it. And there's plenty of organizations out there who have employees. But then when it comes to the rest of their life, the people have just have to handle it on their own. And a lot of times this is not being taught in the educational system. How to survive in the world is not being taught by parents or the educational system. Or many parents and many educational systems do not teach actual living in the world. So why not have corporate citizens? And this is an idea I've heard that we're gonna, we may actually end up going to at some point in the future, and I've, I've read it in science fiction novels, where people no longer are American citizens, but they're citizens of corporations. They pledge their allegiance to Google. They pledge their allegiance to Meta. They pledge their allegiance to Amazon. It's kind of like that right now, if you think about it, but it's really just your working hours. It's kind of like that, that, that show Severance, where during your working hours, all you do is think about work, and you can only think about work, and it's completely cut away from your thinking about life. There's this separation between life and work, and we don't have that separation between life and work anymore. Especially now that we're all, most of us are working from home. So why aren't more corporates paying for their employees' essentials, especially when they're moving them from place point A to point B and expecting them to figure out how to live in point A to point B. Maybe they're doing it for a limited period of time, but what's wrong with expanding that? So instead of paying your Google engineer $250,000, pay them $150,000 and give them a place to live. Give them a food allowance, give them a closing allowance, give them the necessities of life. Make sure that they're not homeless figure out some way of giving them a place to live. It's kind of like the whole universal basic assets concept where everyone talks about UBI, that at some point AI and other systems will take away all of our jobs and jobs will just disappear. And when these jobs disappear, then no one's going to be able to work. So we'll have to pay everybody an income. But instead of doing that, why not universal basic assets? Why not give everyone a home? Give everyone a place to live. Give everyone a food allowance. Give everyone a clothing allowance. Why do we have to give people money? I don't see that as such a bad thing, but I'd love to hear your comments below. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.